Hello, I'm the Man and you are listening to the Inner Goddess interviews and today I am really excited to have with me Lee Melanda and her friend and colleague Nikki and we're going to talk about business and frivolity and well retreats and probably just about everything. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here with me today, Lee. And oh, Nikki. absolutely delighted. Absolutely delighted. This is a this is a treat to be able to talk to England and talk talk to talk to Lee in England. How fun is that? Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers. We're, we're still we're still in the it's very English. mode. So chin chin. <laughs> I am in the um, afternoon drinking coffee mode. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Excellent. Where are the, uh, the, uh, the intravenous, yeah, the intravenous tubes of the caffeine. <laughs> so tell me, Lee, what, I know that you're planning a retreat or you're in the middle of, well, you're probably knee deep in your retreats. What's it going to do? Who's it for? Absolutely. I charge and I retreat all the time. We have about four years ago, uh, not quite five years ago, my husband and I moved from California where we'd been living for about a dozen years back to the East Coast where we're both from. And we wanted to, well, I wanted to. I dragged him along, bless his heart. Um, and and, and he's, been, he's been the soul of patience about this. But I had this vision. I, I, I went to California to get a doctorate in cultural mythology and psychology. I'm very interested in how people create the stories of their own lives and how they imagine and how I can, I've spent a, this weird sort of peripatetic existence doing lots of different things and, and very schizophrenic and, and in very short, short you know, oh, it's shiny, look at that, I want to do that, I'm a toddler all the time. <laughs> And, and oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this one's just like that too. So we're, this is a this is a new soul sister friendship yes. that's emerging here. Um, but what as I looked at this just kind of wacky, disparate set of things that I've done over the course of my life, what I found was at the center of it is is imagination and being fascinated by how we imagine and how we help how how to help people imagine that the one liner that I'm using a lot these days is how to help people imagine past what they think is possible. So sort of helping people see where their barriers are and identify them as as a barrier, and then help them figure out how to do kind of a a parkour with with their lives. So which in parkour is this wonderful art or sports art form uh, exercise form where you instead of seeing obstacles and things literally like buildings and rocks and as things that stop you you learn to use them to propel yourself. So the we're about 4 years ago we moved back from California and we one year ago now, which actually today is just about, uh, today's the 1st of October. It is, today is our actual first anniversary of oh, opening. Oh, happy anniversary. Oh, this Yay. is really exciting. Yeah. Where's the wine? Um, oh, wait, I'm still drinking tea. Um, the, we've opened the doors of a retreat center that we call Spillion, which is in, in the Casco Mountains of New York State, which are really spectacular and right now are just gloriously colored. Um, that The fall leaves this year are just, that, that you, it's, it looks like somebody came out with a paintbrush. It doesn't look like it could be real. It looks like the, everybody's been photoshopping the mountains. It's spectacular times it, five right, right? now. Yeah, it's like you just can't believe these colors. It's incredible. I've not, I've not seen a fall like this in a really yeah. long time, if ever. <laughs> and it's you know, mountain after mountain after mountain. So anyway, we are today, uh, oh, our first year in um, with this retreat center, we bought this amazing uh, building that was built in the 19th century as part of the Fleischmann Yeast family's summer great camp. They had a whole um, array of these houses, and there's only one still standing. So it's this fairly remarkable. It's turn of the century, so it's, and it was very modern. So it's it's a Victorian house, but it looks like an early uh, early uh, uh, 20th century house. It's a stick style architecture house. If you if folks are into architecture. Um, and it's this sort of quintessential go hang out in the mountains and think big thoughts place. Um, and spillion means to play, to jest, or to revel. It's an old English word. And when I got my doctorate, I decided, I got it in mythology, and people either said, oh, how marvelous, how cool, or they said, well, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, if I'm getting this completely frivolous degree, I might as well go full circle and write a, write a dissertation on frivolity. So that's what I wrote my dissertation on, as, as a way into the imagination, as sort of stepping away from being caught up in outcomes, because we all spend so much of our lives going, I'm doing this so I can get to there, I'm doing this so I can get to there. And not I, living right? in the now. Not living in the now, and not living in the in the whatever the movement is of the thing that I'm doing itself. 
we're, we're so focused, you know, we're, we're just, we're, we're in, 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 immersed in that, I think, imbued with that. So I thought, what happens if you do this little rebellious move? Um, and, and the word, the root of the word frivol comes from the same root as revel, which is part of the Spillian connection, and also rebel. So it's a little baby rebellion. It's a little thumbing your nose and putting a red clown nose on and going, I'm not walk. No, the world says I'm supposed to march in a straight line. I'm turning left, and I'm going to go over here. So this whole experience is that, <laughs> um, of doing this retreat center, which is, which is a, an amazing thing. So we're playing, and we're doing... We're, we're doing a bunch of different things here. We're, we're um, doing a lot of private rentals right now where people are coming and having special events, whether it's a wedding or, or a gathering of friends that are celebrating something. Or um, We've got a group coming in this fall of, of men that are hit, they're hitting their mid-50s and they're saying, okay, midlife crisis has arrived. What do we want to do? And so we're bringing in a... Um, I'm doing a little bit of uh, facilitating. We're bringing in a friend of ours who's a th uh, also a therapist who works with men a lot to have this fabulous, delightful weekend where they eat great food and they drink some really nice port and they smoke cigars and they think big thoughts about what they're going to do next. So we're kind of all over the map. Yeah, it feels like getting married or meeting at a little mini castle. Yeah, which, it's a little mini I mean, castle. How yeah. fun is that? Yeah, we actually mm -hmm. got BuzzFeed picked us up on a story and, oh, and we were identified yeah. as one of 13 Disney castles that you could actually stay in because our, our dining room looks like the scene from the movie um, the Beauty and the Beast. The yes. you go. So, and then with Mickey, what we're doing is, um, sorry, I've got an itchy nose here. Um, the, the, Nikki is, uh, um, works with a, a mutual friend, that's how I met her, um, named Joseph, and uh, they have been, they're, they're web gurus, they're mar web marketing gurus, and I'll, I'll let you talk a little bit about what sure. you guys do. So my background is SEO, or search engine optimization, so <laughs> I'll show up on Google and being in Which she's here to help me do today. To yes, do that is girl. today's task here for Spillian. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, these. this is uh, what Joseph, and Joseph's background is also um, incorporates tech, so he was a uh, head of development for IBM for many, many years. So um, these are our former lives. Yes, <laughs> they're reinventing themselves. Yes. Very exciting. So, I mean, that, that provides a certain amount of income, but now we we want to do the left turn into frivolity. <laughs> and so and oddly, they found me. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> what a strange coincidence. Just, right. you know, synergistic connection. So Joseph was here for a workshop uh, in July, fell in love with the place. So he came back uh, when I returned from a trip from Rio. Uh, we spent a week here and we decided, you know what? There's a void in the marketplace right now for taking these alchemical, mythological, esoteric concepts and applying these things which mean so much to us personally to business. Yeah. So there's and a so, hole there. There's yes. a there's a and there's a need. And I think there's a market need and there's also a soul need in our in our culture globally that I think are somewhere along the line, when I step back and I put my cultural mythologist hat on and I look at this, I think we split really artificially the idea of doing good and doing well in the world. And I think that that's a big reason why businesses are struggling to to find their feet and to find their soul and to find their center. So what we're looking at doing is as a is these guys are these guys have a big goal to, and a big plan to build a really cool multi phase multi phase construct <laughs> where they'll help people who have expertise in presenting in various wisdom traditions into the marketplace to connect. So they're going to be the brokers, basically. But we're we starting. We provide the stage. Yeah, yeah. So they're um, they're yentas. They're they're soul yentas. There you go. Enablers. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's going to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> so and what we're starting with as an example, to sort of as a pilot program, is I'm working with them and we're creating a um, a series of workshops where we're going to invite. Um, uh, organizations to come to the table and figure out what what is their story, what's their myth, what is the what's the big thing that's cooking in them as as why they exist, what they're doing, and what are the stories around that? How do they how do they identify themselves? And people have done some of this some 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 of this work in the branding world, in the marketing world, but what we're and this is absolutely applicable. But what we're interested in trying to help people do is figure out. Where the center is, so there's always something really clear to go back to. Because I think we get corporations get off balance because they forget that they lose that. And so, 
spending some time really in a very careful, thoughtful way looking at that construct and saying, what's here? That helps to, it's almost like this big sort of fleshed out story level mission statement. Understanding your company's grail quest. Which yeah. Is what we're yeah, which, yeah, we're playing it with it. Yeah, we're yeah. looking we're looking as a as a um so what's what's the holy grail using some wonderful and you, you live in the land of all of this right. you, you know, talk about immersed in grail world. The um to send them to you to Glastonbury. But the um the idea is that that you know when you open when you start a company, and I know know this because I'm doing this right now in my own life, that you have you sort of identify these holy grails of what success looks like. So and and you can get, you can be very thoughtful about that, but you can also sort of lose sight of that. So part of this is about saying, what is our quest? So our myth is built around this quest for whatever it is we've defi defined. It's going to go into this grail that we that we're going, and, and it's you know there's financial success, but there's other stuff. And so the what does that look like, and how does it mean? What does it look like about how you how the company lives in community? How how it how it deals with money? How it what it puts out into the world and what the impacts of that are. And so how do you build a story around that? And then, then we're going to invite people to, so that's sort of day one of this uh, as we're envisioning these workshops. And then day two, um, and we're going to actually send them on quests and we're have, we've got some really fun ideas about how to play with them. And, and Pulling in the multiple modalities. Exactly, so exactly. So <laughs> Away. Yeah, and has fun, and and that the we're using the one of the reasons that the Grail stories felt like fun to us is because it's such a marvelous, um, it is such a marvelous quest story, but also we're playing with the Parsifal version of those stories where the hero is the fool, and there's something, and I've done a bunch of workshops using around the fool, using the fool, and which of course connects into frivolity beautifully, and it's it's a way of remembering our own lightness and our own our own lack of power and our own childish childishness yes. and the wisdom that comes from being in that place yes. rather than being in the you know I'm the authority figure um, yes. and I'm pulling off all these layers that other people told me that I needed to be and what success is and yes. what, what is yes. success to me yes. what do I want to do and how do I change that into a yeah and so exactly and yeah. so we're, day two is 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 doing that and inviting people to see how they intersect with the company that they're working with so how how is their myth intertwining with the company's myth and what happens at the end of that and so we're um, and how we think. So this is kind of an experiment that this can this can really help companies work together better, um, help organizations both both for profit and nonprofit, um, and then have this moment of helping people as they're as they're working their own stuff. We were laughing the other night, going, "And well, at the end of the re end of the workshop, everyone will go, and I don't want to work for this company anymore. <laughs> so we'll be known as the people that you know destroyed companies." But <laughs> that too. <laughs> so and then they'll go on and build their own. So, there you go. You know, See, there you go. No, it, I think it'll bring the, oh, the I right do. train. I, I do. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yes. And, Those and, who agree with the mission of the company are going to march forth uh, with, with a solidified vision of what the grail is and be able to achieve that yeah. much more effectively than yeah. if everybody is an individual night tearing off in different directions yeah, and, and yeah. arguing with each other and clashing exactly. each other over things. But each I other thought the grail sword. was this and it's yeah. that way. Come on, you idiots. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. Everyone agrees yeah. that this is what we're going for and these are the obstacles and these are the steps to get there. Yeah. And then you've got the two that go, I don't want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 on this, right, uh, I'm off on this quest. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's okay. Right? Absolutely. That's, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Life evolves. Yeah. Oh that sounds so much more fun than sitting there thinking about, you know, um, mission statements and all right? the other boring stuff that goes. <laughs> yes, and actually, even before we talk, started talking about the workshops, I asked Lee, "Hey, pull from your huge library, which is one of the things that I love most about this place. The books that are in here, I could. Yeah. I it's could an spend, addiction. I could spend months. <laughs> anyway, I asked her to pull um, the books that she thought would be most helpful in, in pulling together this workshop. And one of the ones that she did, who's it by? Um, the, 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 the gift pyramid, the pyramid oh. of knowing. Oh yes. Oh god, I'm gonna forget the author's name. It's it's he's building on Howard Gardner's work. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Who is the guy that out of Harvard who did some really work, uh, has done some world-changing work on intelligence and how intelligence is quantified, um, and how it's and how it works in people. And he started. 
probably 34 years ago now, looking, and at that point there was very little research done beyond mathematical and analytical skills. So he he built out this whole world about how I think he's actually up to 12 now, um, uh, multiple intelligences, which include... So it's how we learn and how we process and how we approach the world. So there's, in addition to sort of the obvious things that we think about testing when we test IQ, there's also spatial intelligence, there's musical intelligence, there's interpersonal intelligence, there's intrapersonal intelligence. Because and and his, what what and I, I worked with um, an arts organization in in uh, uh, Philadelphia a number of years ago that when he was this stuff was just starting to really hit the arts world and the education world. Um, it was really exciting because suddenly rather than saying, okay, you know, everybody has to sit down and learn and process in this way, there's this opening up of saying, wait a second, we all have we all have a, a constellation of these various talents in varying levels. And that and they can change throughout our life too. So to even be aware of that and to say, okay, how how do we help celebrate that? How do we help people recognize where their own skills are? And then challenge them to jump past, to into the stuff that doesn't necessarily feel as comfortable, because amazing things can happen when you do that. But if you've got an understanding of that, you, you can open doors for people in some wonderful ways. Imagine so, going past what you thought is possible. Exactly. That, I think, is the most inspiring part of the book, is that you know we all come in at these different levels for the different types of intelligence, but through practice... Yeah. through it's elastic right yeah. we can we yeah. can increase these different areas yeah. so amazing yeah. and I think too um, that's going to be one of the themes of the workshop you know uh, the the typical corporate world defines success in terms of that one variable how much are we making yeah. right yep. and so expand that into multiple variables and then be able to achieve that you know, successful it's, goal it's a, it's occurring to me that there's the um, I've been on the edges of some conversations about how to reimagine the corporate community as a more sustainable place and there's a movement in the United States I know there's a similar one actually in England and I'm going to forget what it's called in the US it's called a B Corp um, B Corporation rather than in being an LLC or a, or a C Corporation it's actually a way that you can file and what they're trying to do in, in, in most corporate structures now and across the world and this is a symptom I think of why we're so off balance with 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 where the capitalistic world is living right now is that there's there's language built into the laws about companies that if you are a publicly traded company with stockholders your sole legal responsibility is to make as much money as you can for your stakeholders so it can pull people and companies way off their myth and their goal and their sole work because you know for example the um, and it's, it's one of the reasons why companies get taken over. So Ben and Jerry's, the two guys that do ice cream in the U.S., who've been these amazing forces sort of for good in, in the world, they early on opened up the company to, to employees to own stock because they wanted to share the wealth. And then they got vulnerable. So they had a hostile takeover and they couldn't say no because by law it was going to make their stockholders money. So one of the things that the B Corp is trying to do is address that and to say, actually, there's a triple bottom line, and there's it's it's so it's it's the three E's of, of the sustainability movement. It's the economics, it's the environment, and it's the it's the um, so the, the social the social economy, the social justice of of. Um, how how do, how is this make how do we set this up so we move everything forward we move the environment forward we move the economy forward we move people forward all at the same time mm -hmm. so I'm thinking it's just occurring to me that this sort of way of working myth could be a really interesting plug into what those guys are doing absolutely and you know it's funny um, the discussion that we were having before we pushed play here yeah. um, on the masculinity and the, the mm -hmm. femininity I mean that's what they're talking about the wasteland mm -hmm. that was the land before these two areas were balanced and I know uh, Lynn that's sort of one of your areas of expertise the divine feminine so you want to jump in and yeah we're babbling Come, yeah, yeah. Talk, talk yeah. To us about what yeah. As you're hearing us babble, what you think? What what sparks in your head? Oh, I was um, gosh, I was just enjoying listening to all these things and thinking about how um, unbalanced the business world is. And I was wondering if, like people like myself, who struggle most with like kind of like the financial part of business of actually making money, could well, I could really benefit from your <laughs> your growl. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I think so, and I, I, you know, I've spent, I was a performing artist for a number of years, and I have lived in, I have taken that performing artist vow of poverty over the years, um, and I, I got to a point, I actually was working with uh, Derek Walcott, who is a Nobel Prize winning poet, extraordinary poet from the West Indies, and, and a playwright as well, and I got invited to go be part of a playwriting workshop that he was doing in Boston, and he said a lot of amazing things, but the, interestingly enough, the thing that he said the most with me was not anything having to do with writing, but he said, you know, he, he, he was, he's this absolutely elegant, terrifying West Indian studied in England and, and just glorious and could destroy a room with a look, you know, his, and, and loving too, but I, love, I adore this man, he's really fabulous, so powerful, and, and, but he turns on this group one day, and I don't even know why, what, 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 what prompted him, and he said, he went off into this wonderful rant about how he thought the whole mythology around being a starving artist, that this story that we told ourselves about being a starving artist is somehow noble and that earning money is bad and wrong, he said that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. And all you've done is you've put yourself into a corner and you've marginalized yourself. And it was like this enormous light bulb went on over my head that day and I thought that was that moment for me where I thought, you can do good and do well at the same time. You don't have to think of them as being different. And I think that I'd love to do actually, and I know there's some people doing some wonderful work around this, but I'd love to incorporate this in some of the stuff that we're doing, is how, how do you, how, as, I've, as I've been an artist, as I've worked with artists, as I've worked with people that are, that are most, you know, most of my friends and colleagues are just like you, Lynn, and I've spent most of my life being there too, of saying, you know, I have these, I want to, I want to do good in the world. I want to do something that is meaningful and valuable and, and is kind and isn't, doesn't feel greedy and rapacious and grabbing. And, and I think that we can connect those dots. And I think actually everybody's better for it if we do. And so if I've got one sort of big cultural goal, one of them is how do we bring that do good, make good back together again? Because I think, I think it's the same kind of split into this binary thinking that you know, that you're discovering. I know you, you've done all this work diving into, into sort of what your perceptions of the divine feminine are. And she, the, the Lynn was just telling us she was in uh, was Glastonbury, right, last week? Yes. Yeah. And went, oh, oh, oh man, I, there's, okay, there's this whole sort of masculine thing I guess I need to pay attention to now. And, and we all go, you know, we, we have stages and we have processes and we need to go deep into stuff. But I, for me, it's about those intersections. And that the... I studied um, Carl Jung's work a fair amount in grad school, and and the who had his own issues around women, but we won't go there. Um, <laughs> his little oh, that's a whole another ah, show. So, <laughs> rant on that for a long time. Um, but the of all of his ideas, and he had a lot of extraordinary ideas. The thing that most st sticks with me is something that he called the transcendent function, and this is not an idea he invented, but it's something that he talked about very, very um, beautifully and articulately. And in his mind, what what that means, what that is, is that if you sit holding the tension of what seems to be opposite, seems to be so in this case, either you know, masculine and feminine as we as we define them, or um, you know, being being a financial success and being a decent human being, right? And they feel like they're totally, they're, they're never going to hit, they're never going to connect. If you can sit long enough, this is what he believed, and I think he's right, if you can sit long enough just holding those two, letting them be there, eventually some third thing gets born. And that that's what he called the transcendent function. So you're transcending these two things. Transcending and, duality. Wow. Right? Wow. So yeah. So you're moving into this different way of sort of interconnecting. And I you know, and at meeting up with Nikki and Joseph is a great example. Like these are two folks that have been very successful in in found a way to make the corporate world work, but are saying, Okay, how do we step back now and find our own version of this, right? You know what's crazy about this. <laughs> the book that I brought called The Holy Grail, there are three branches of these stories mm -hmm. that they talk about. You've got the Celtic version, you've mm -hmm. got the Christian version, mm -hmm. which is a little obscured mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. what That's they yeah, did to the little, tales. Yeah. But then the one that I resonated with the most is this chemical branch, which pulls in alchemical concepts, yep, yep. and what I was telling Joseph as I was reading this is, you know, you've got the two which felt like Dual ver the dualistic versions, and then you had Wolfram, mm -hmm. this poet, who kind of took the best from those yep. and created one that resonates so much more, and it's exactly yeah. the dynamic that you're talking about. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Transcendence. So transcendence, right? <laughs> and, and transcendence not by, I think we have a tendency in this culture to think transcendence is this sort of 
burst of will, you know, that we've got to mold and squish the world into our into our own vision, and that that we Through transcend control. transcend it by doing that. Which is, you know, the Eastern traditions they all go, oh, you know, <laughs> you crazy Westerners, you just don't get it. And but this and this this keys into that sense of just. It's not. It's not passive, and that's the interesting thing. Like, it, there's a different way of being, and it. it's not sitting and going. Well, I'm on the couch, and something is going to happen. Nor is it, you know, banging down doors. And you know, we we when we first started talking with Lynn, we were talking again before we hit we hit record. We were talking a little bit about how Inner Goddess as a as a radio show or a podcast or a, a Google Hangout. Um, uh, thing started and and it was in res her your response right to yeah. to this push to having to be out there and to be commercial so what you did was made it happen in a way that made sense for you and this is exactly how we define masculine and feminine mm -hmm. exactly how you said it that mm -hmm. it's not just sitting there and waiting for things to right. happen but it's not pounding down doors it's right. the balance between the, balance. the two yep. that is the secret right yep. Right. Yep. Yep. And and whether it's you know whether you use masculine and feminine language or you use aggressive and you know it, uh, there's lots of language that you can cast All in. Labels. But the, right. yeah, that that where is the where is the drive and where is the container and and how do you dance with those and how do we understand that we're all these marvelously complex combinations of those things. And I think getting back to your question, uh, how, how do you do business in this world? Um, for me, from my personal experience, it has been the partnership. So the first business that I started uh, was me and uh, this guy Patrick, and uh, I was good at figuring out how to do things the first time and then handing it off to him to do over and over again. And neither one of us could do the other one's job yeah, because yeah. I'm not good at repetition and, and he's not quite as good at the, the innovation side yeah. of it. So I think I think that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you figure out what your personal strengths are, mm -hmm. day two of the workshop, right. and that's then right. you pull in, you figure out who's missing from the tribe. Who else do we need to right. get to that goal? Right. Right. And and working with everyone's strengths, channeling everyone's um, inner essence in the best way, yep. and working toward a common goal. And so. I, I, I absolutely, I think I totally agree. And I think you know, looking, you're you're in a, a like a lot of people are. You're in you're in kind of a solo quest. You know, you've chosen to do this work independently on some levels, which I've spent much of my life doing. I've been a freelancer in one way or another most of my adult life, and there's a huge, wonderful freedom in that because I can come and go whenever I want. But there's also a lot of weight that can sit on your shoulders because you don't. There's nobody, excuse me, ever sitting behind you going, "Well, I'll catch this one, right?" So I think part of it is doing exactly what we're doing here today and what the way that I met you, Lynn, which is through this wonderful um, Facebook group that our mutual friend Chris Oster founded. Um, Chris is a grad school buddy of mine who's. Um, I, uh, has this extraordinary entrepreneurial energy and and generous energy energy. So she's uh, that same thing. She's driving and she's she's you know containing. And I she's created this place for this lovely conversation and has invited and attracted this whole group of people who happen to be mostly women. But I think that that's I think that that's true. It's just sort of that's how. It is. But who do this, right? Who are sitting in this and who are finding ways to being to be each other's backs. So I think I think the I think when you're when yeah, you're right, right when finding sort of intentional community is important when you're doing it on your own. Yeah. And like when I started these interviews, like I've been toying around with using YouTube and podcasts for ages, but nothing really felt right to me. Like it felt like I was trying to do too much marketing or I didn't have the right things to say. But as soon as I thought about, well, let's interview other women, let's there's more of a purpose than just me talking, that everything flowed and it has been so much fun. I've loved it. The, but the feeling had to be right to begin with for me to be motivated to carry on doing it. Right. So it had to be it had to be soul work and not feel I think the and I've spent a lot of years doing marketing work and, and when I when I work with clients the uh, and I, I get it because I started there too. Like when you're trying to sell your own thing, you instantly go to this place where, oh my gosh, I'm Willie Loman, you know, I'm death of a salesman, I'm this pathetic, you know, 
floor brush salesman and or a used car salesman and How did this I hate this, right? Yeah. I, I hate this. And and what happens is is that when you start to climb into this, you realize that Sales and marketing is, is just about telling a story and it's about trying to figure out where your passions are and where the passions are of the person that you're talking to and if they connect. You know, and we're, we're, we're learning here at Spillion and we, we, you know, we've got big bills to pay and there's a lot of tension. It's a big facility and it's, you know, big eyes. We've got all of our life savings locked into this and if we crash and burn, it's going to be spectacular. And so there's an instinct here. Oh, yeah, it'll be big. Um, we'll invite everyone. Um, the, but the the... What, what we're finding, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching my husband, Mark, who's doing a lot of the sort of day-to-day -day reservation taking, is you, go, you start from this place of saying, I have to say yes to everybody. And then, then you actually realize that, no, we aren't everybody's cup of tea. So if we're just truthful about yes. who we are and put that out in the world, the right people find us. And the ones who come and say, well, I think I want this, but you know, do you have color televisions in the room? And do you have coffee makers? And, I, and it's like, you know what? You won't be happy here. And so we aren't a good fit, and so nobody wins then. And, and that, I think that takes a huge sort of pressure off of having to be all things to all people. Because I think when, when we start selling marketing stuff, that's what we think. And I know you live in that world very distinctly because that's really what SEO is all about. Isn't Absolutely. It? That honest assessment of this is who I am, and this is what I'm really good at, and these are the things that I rather just outsource, yeah, right? right? Go or away. or, yeah. or somebody bring else in a do, partner, or, yep, right, yep. right. And that honest assessment piece is absolutely critical, both from the individual perspective, what I bring to the, the round table, and uh, from a company perspective. This is what we're really good at doing at. And then instead of boiling the ocean, you know, you're going after that specific grail quest. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and you're and so you're going with a group of people so that are more are, are going to want to go there with you, exactly. and who are looking for similar exactly. things. Exactly, common vision, right? That honest assessment piece is absolutely critical. Yeah. That's a really hard thing when you first start off in business, though, isn't it? To realize that you need to narrow oh. your market down because oh, it's scary. Especially as you get lost with the internet, when you've got the whole wide world at your fingertips, so you think, "Oh, yeah, come okay, well, on, you can all, you all want a piece of me, <laughs> get me." Right, right, and then, right. You know what's funny when when we went to Woodstock with uh, Will Pye, mm -hmm. who's actually giving a, a workshop here. Uh, yeah, on Saturday, he's Saturday. doing this really extraordinary workshop. He's a, a coach and a teacher, and he's um, a brain tumor survivor. And he wrote a book called "Blessed with a Brain Tumor," and he's working ideas. He calls it radical gratitude, and so he works at the intersections of places where we're uncomfortable, things that can be challenging or hard or scary in our lives. And what happens when you say, instead of, oh my gosh, I don't want this, ah, instead you say, okay, I'm going to embrace this and I'm going to be grateful for whatever's coming through with it. Some amazing things open. He's pretty, he's, he's pretty Amazing story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that message is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we were discussing with him the same sorts of issues, you know, um, and, and, and the sort of... Um, I don't know, worry that he had that if he went after the health crisis area, am I pigeonholing myself? Right. Am I typecasting myself? Yep. And the point that Joseph and I made with him is, no, you know, you have to, in order to get to that transcendent point, yeah. you have to start somewhere. Yeah. And so let's start here. Let's start with that niche. And then once you get to the, above the waterline, then you can expand yeah. out. But somehow you got to climb yeah. on top of that you, wave. And so, and that's, so that's I think, way yeah, no, I think that's really wise. And 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 I, the same point was made. I mean, this is how it's done in SEO. Instead of trying to, you know, go after these really broad keywords where you have no shot right. at page one. Right. right. Instead, right. If we you say go yeah, after right, right. Like, pick yeah. a niche, pick yeah. a niche, and hopefully you've got a, a geo base that you can that you can uh, leverage as well. So cat skills or Flushman or yep. whatever it is, yep. um, or a programming or a something, right? A flavor, something. Yeah. Whether it's a geo base or whether it's a, a niche category or a combination of the two is even better. Go to page one for there and. Build out once you once you get to page one, you know. You so know, one of one of the things, Lynn, that, that I've done a, a little bit of work with that that I, I found really helpful in part because it's a creative process is to create. You know, you can do marketing. Big marketing firms talk about doing focus groups and doing split testing and all this sort of you know language. You just want to shoot yourself. But one of the things that people that marketing folks do that I I 
connect with is the idea of creating an avatar of what who you're trying to reach. What does that person look like? Are they are they male? Are they female? Are they are they either? What what are they like? What do they drink? What do they wear? What do they laugh at? What are their jokes? What kind of clothing do they wear? So you've really fleshed out this person. And what happens when you do that is that it all of a sudden it goes foop. And, and this, I have to reach everyone about all things at all times, which isn't going to happen. So you end up sort of canceling yourself out because you're trying to do or be too many things. Right. Instead, you actually focus, and, and, and then, then you get into what happens when you start to think with intention about creating things and you know we've all had I'm sure you you've you worked this if you're working the kind of doing the work that you're doing that that where intentionality can bring you and what what how much what we think about shapes what happens in our world and so if we think about that person that we want to and to touch you know it isn't even necessarily that I want to sell something to so that's part of the transaction what who is it that's looking for what I have to bring to the world the, right. The, this is the essence of SEO. Isn't that way. amazing? Yeah. <laughs> so, and and I've been a little lazy about it with my own business because it's a lot easier to tell the other people how to do it than it is yourself. <laughs> so maybe we maybe we poke at the uh, enchanted entrepreneurship circle on Facebook to have a create your own avatar um, process, and where we're supporting each other with that a little bit because it it is it's a heck of a lot easier to see this stuff in somebody else. Of course, way. and that's the way the game of life is played. That's we right. go look at that guy and what he's doing, and then we realize, oh, oh shoot, I'm doing that yeah. too. I never realized oh. yet. But um, <laughs> I, I mean, looking back on my career, even before I started the the two businesses, it was I was I was thinking about what unites my professional success mm -hmm. and it was always creating that win-win situation okay. in SEO, in copywriting, connecting people that want something yep. with company that offers yep. said thing. And then everybody's happy. Yes. Right? And so it doesn't have this to feel sleazy. It, it doesn't have to feel icky. This is why it works. Yeah. Because yeah. it actually provides yeah. a service. Yes. So the 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 and there are lots of ways I think to construct that, but I think that's the movement. And the the you know, when I was working in the nonprofit world, um, everybody in the nonprofit world thinks they're doing the most noble work known to mankind. And, you know, in their head, yes. But it may or may not matter to the person down the street. So but that's a lot of the work that I did when I was helping nonprofits sort of figure out how they talk to whether it was funders or donors or people who would be involved. Why should they care about, you know, we, we all. I, who says that your dog rescue is more or less. Valuable than what the you know the the little kids after school reading program is down the street. The thing is, you're both valuable, and so you got to find each find the people that the you know the dog folks got to go find the dog lovers, and the and the after school reading program has to find the reading lovers because they're out there, and it's just figuring out how to talk with them and and meet their needs too. So, but I I think I'm 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 jazzing about this avatar idea. I think we should go back and and kick that into the enchanted entrepreneurship circle. What do you think? I think that's a really good idea. And if we can get other people's input, because maybe other people see our customers differently from what we say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So well, piece is uh, part of the workshop as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this this has been marketing 101, mm -hmm. you know, the user persona. Now mm -hmm. it's being called an avatar. Because it's fun. Because it's, yeah. Oh, and it absolutely. captures a sort of it's mystic fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah. We should create dolls of our ideal customer. Yes. Um. And then you can pin them when they piss you off. No, no, I didn't say that. Happiness and like, happiness and like, how easy here again. <laughs> I'm angry middle-aged lady. I'm sorry. I was. I used to be a nice girl. <laughs> Something happened. <laughs> Dark and the feminine. <laughs> Let's be real. Excellent. <laughs> This has been fun. Excellent. It has. It has. I'm. I'm really, really pleased that you um, persevered with Google Hangouts because I know it's. It can be trying at times. To do this. We, we were on a quest. Yes. We, yes. we made it through the gate. The Google gatekeepers <laughs> to get to the. So. so tell me where where can people find you? Give me all your email addresses and. 
Um, the uh, you can find the Spillian stuff at Spillian, which is S as in Sam, P as in Peter, I L L I A N dot com. You can email us at play at Spillian dot com, which is sort of our big overall email address. Um, and then the the little publishing company that I've started is Meandering Press dot com. My last name is Melander, and I was called Meandering Melander in college, so I decided that if I was going to oh. do something, I needed to just wander because <laughs> that's what I do. Um, I'm starting actually a radio radio show on the 14th of October um, that will be a broadcast at 9 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard U.S. time, um, streaming on WIOXradio.org, and that show is going to be called Myth America, which sent us into hysteria of lisping the other day. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be playing with uh, what, what sort of cooking, what are the big stories cooking in our culture, so I'm excited about that. So those are a few of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm pinging around enjoying. Right, and so uh, my full name is Nikki Johnson, and uh, I work for Galileo Tech Media, where GalileoTechMedia.com would be our, our website address. So uh, she works for. She's one of two partners. Yeah, she <laughs> but then a whole network of, uh, of contractors in and all stuff, different areas of specialty, from SEO to tech to <laughs> cool site development. Cool. So well, thank, thank you, you so much, much for being part of the interview. <laughs> it has been fun. Thank no you so problem. much for having me being part of this. And um, have a great day uh, over there. <laughs> Bye. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs>